Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a the official snowfall forecast <clears throat> for the Northeast winter 2019. So if you're wondering what I mean by official snowfall forecast, uh, despite it being you know fairly straightforward, I just want to make uh, make it clear that this is what I think how much snow or you know how much i think the northeast will get in terms of snowfall this year i will base this on average and then you know show you the why i think it will be above average for the northeast in, in you know this year uh, in particular but uh, i'll get to the exact totals towards the end of the video so you can skip towards that but before you do consider subscribing to this channel consider liking this video uh leaving a nice comment if you're watching the video comment uh, where you're watching from or your favorite type of weather that really just um motivates more people to comment and i just want to see what my, my viewers you know uh who they are and i like interacting with them so i'll really uh consider doing so Thank you. So the main uh, factors we'll be looking at is the ends of outlook, which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. I'll explain what that means and how that impacts our uh, snowfall in the Northeast. Uh, NOAA's seasonal outlook, which I take in fairly lightly as it's, it really is not that <clears throat> trustworthy and it seems to be at least uh, showing some signs though of agreeing with others and analogs comparing previous winters to upcoming ones <clears throat> and also I'll be showing you the average annual average snowfall for the Northeast so or in this case the whole you know the whole states but you can see the Northeast right there basically what states this included was uh, I think New Jersey was included or maybe not but definitely Pennsylvania New York Boston Connecticut Rhode Island Connecticut Rhode Island uh, Vermont New Hampshire don't know which ones which I always get those two mixed up and then Maine so you could see a good, you know, I mean, read your thing, read where your county is. Uh, if you live in Buffalo, you're somewhere in, I think, up here. So uh, choose your location and here's the scale. And I'll be basing this based on average. But first I want to talk about, you know, what the impacts will, will be. Because sometimes people are like, where's your scientific data on the videos when I don't include it? So uh, here's my research or data that I back this up. So if you want to watch this through, consider, you know, watching through. If not, then just skip ahead with the video with the clicker. Um, I don't have an exact time but it's towards the end will be the final one and then updated uh this was august 8th which is uh supposed to a new one was supposed to be updated uh yesterday actually so i'll be making a video on that very soon but i'm pretty sure nothing really has changed drastically yet enzo neutral is most likely to continue through the northern <coughs> hemisphere winter 2019 2020 and or you could see that uh i mean fall will be most likely neutral the biggest uh, next uh fact or the biggest next competitor for the neutral top uh, i guess crown is the el nino but at this point it seems like the, uh, the neutral is most uh likely to happen here's the qualifications for an el nino La Nina. Anything below this is a La Nina. Anything above this is an El Nino. And you may be wondering what these are. These are basically models. And each little string, little spaghetti, if you want to call it, is uh, a model showing. So you can see some are showing diving into La Nina. One, actually. But there's several that are showing diving it into an El Nino. Quite a big, uh, you know, the concentration. But there's also quite a bit showing uh, of that neutral. And for the past several uh, months, or ever since this has been updated, several weeks, it's been more and more trend towards towards a neutral, uh, you know, towards that uh, s you know, southern shift. So that's something to note as well. So I think now uh, I will be, yeah, I will be showing you the sea surface temperature. So what is an Enzo? Enzo, as you can see, it's forecasted to be neutral. But what, what does that, you know, what, what, like how? What does that even mean? Uh, well, basically, that's uh, the, this is the Enzo region, this whole, uh, I guess, central Pacific Ocean. You can see it's these waters, whether they're above or below. When, when they're above, it's an El Nino. When it's below 0 0.5, it's a La Nina. And right now, it may seem like there's a La Nina because it's below, but it's warmer out here. And it's basically a neutral pattern. And that is, you know, that is for sure. It's just what's not for sure is how long <clears throat> this will continue for. So as we go, um, you know, I mean assuming that a neutral will take hold or will continue already has taken hold and you can see that we are showing you now what a neutral has you know what a neutral enzo impacts are on winter and you can see that <clears throat> it brings in colder air across the northeast and the reason why this is a big factor i mean this is a really big factor you can see that here's a polar jet stream here's kind of like the averaged out throughout the whole interview to put the i mean you know the jet stream will sometimes go like this like this like i mean all over the place so if you averaged it out of all the jet streams that happen during a neutral winter it would 
would be something like this. Notice how also there's wet and warm conditions to the south may seem irrelevant, but it's actually very important as these conditions <coughs> will, uh, okay, uh, these uh, conditions will actually allow for systems to ride along the subtropical jet stream, get bigger, grow in strength, produce a giant swath of rain, you know, at this point in a southern portion, and once it taps into that cold air, could transition to <clears throat> some heavy snow, and that's where a nor'easter could form, so that's something very noteworthy, uh, since we're talking about the northeast snowfall totals. Um, so that, that's a huge factor. Now, <clears throat> um, we are looking at, uh, we are looking at August of 2014, 2013, and basically what I found was, I mean, not just 2013, 2014, many years, and I just picked out August that were chilly, and I mean, that were like chilly like this year. <clears throat> also notice how there's a little heart right here, pretty cute in my opinion, but, uh, I digress, um, you can see that basically... <clears throat> Here is a huge anomaly of cooler temperatures across all these August combined, and you could see, we, you could see where I'm going here. That I compared this to out of this year's August, and this year's August wasn't nearly as cold, <clears throat> but it was uh, chilly for a good portion of the north central country, and it was warmer once you got out for the fringes of the country. So you know it was a little bit different, but it um, it was in different increments. This is only 0.8 of a degree colder, even though it looks like if it could be t 10 to 15 degrees colder. If you just first saw this, but basically I just compared it to a similar August that we had this year, many August. This is what the December's of cool August led to. You could see 2014, 2013, 2009, all the same years, same exact ones. Um, this is what the December turned out when the August was cold, and this year was pretty chilly for that. You know that same region shown in this graph, and really December wasn't that chilly. It was chilly definitely, but. You can see January got a little bit more um, <clears throat> concentrated towards the north and the east. And this would obviously uh, produce way more snowstorms for the northeast. Uh, you know, more rain to snow transitions at, for sure. And more, more snow than rain, basically. And then this is February. You can see pretty chilly in March. Again, chilly for a good portion of the eastern U.S., including obviously the northeast, which, which we were talking about in this uh, which we want to, you know, which we're focusing on, and you can see that would definitely induce more snow, not rain. Uh, so that that would also lead to a snowier season. You can see Noah. This is the one where they're showing a warmer, uh, <clears throat> a warmer pattern for the Northeast and more of that chilly air. And they have equal chances here. But when they show this uh, this far out, it basically means this will be blue once time arrives. And or you can see this is for December, January, February time frame. And you can see they're showing warm air for the Northeast. So maybe the Arctic blast is not getting that cold. Um, you know, I take yeah, Noah is pretty good in her forecasts. Uh, they work off science as well, but um, <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is actually a pretty cold uh, forecast that they put out here. It may not seem like a cold air, you see warm everywhere, but that's just what NOAA does. It puts out warm conditions out ahead just to be sure when it's that far out, and then once we get like a month in advance, you can see this is 3.5. Once we get like a month in advance, they change it to like what they actually think it is, which is a little bit goofy, but you know, that's their call. And you can see they have the Northeast as being warm, so that doesn't really agree with our stuff, but, I mean, again, I've seen this change so many times, they, I think they were, they butchered the 2017-2018 winter outlook, it was, it was, I think they absolutely massacred that, it was not right at all, uh, just to let you know, uh, you know that Noah isn't everything, and then this is my final forecast, my final <clears throat> snowfall outlook, as you can see, uh, there's many colors, some of them are funky, like the green color at the bottom, but um, you can see it included in New Jersey. So let's start at the red color. You can see the most red. I only labeled one area, but that you know the 120 inches plus consists for many others, or the same as you know the, the other red areas. And you can see it's a portion of Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, upstate New York, and, and northern Maine. That's 120. Usually it's you know in those similar locations. But basically anywhere you live in the Northeast and you're looking at this map right now and wondering what I changed since you didn't memorize that map in the front, which I don't expect you to. Uh, basically what I did was I gave you a little bit more snow. I think most of the Northeast should be uh, seeing 10 to 20 inches of more additional snow. Uh, a bigger area of, you know, I just expanded the 60 to 80 as you can see a good chunk of the country. I think areas like Boston may see even more snow than 60 inches this year. 
And if we move into the pink area, we can see it's 110 to 120 inches right here. That uh, extends again for New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, parts of Maine, the bigger chunk of Maine, and uh, basically extending all the way to Lake Ontario. Also, there are notice parts of Lake Erie with that lake effect. I think lake, uh, this year lake effect will be fairly uh, powerful. 110 to 120 as well. Then we have 80 to 100 in a darker blue. Uh, a good chunk, again, more than usual. I carried that up. And then 60 to 80. Uh, all of Maine, all of New Hampshire, <clears throat> all of Vermont, parts of Massachusetts, the western half, the northwestern half, really, and all of New York uh, State, maybe excluding New York City uh, and its suburbs, and then northern Pennsylvania as well, but... Um, I think that could get expanded easily, <laughs> especially if we get a couple of coastal big, you know, big boys that could bring the total up uh, ridiculously. And then we have the 40 to 60 range uh, in this purple at for cities like Boston and uh, any. I think Hartford maybe or may not be in this. It's somewhere in Connecticut. I don't know exactly where, but uh, it's, you know the southern eastern portion of New York, but not New York City. But that could definitely again expand. This could definitely change. This is not set in stone, but that's the beauty of this forecast and weather that it changes all the time. And you can see 20 to 40 for these areas. But if I were now to re-edit this, now looking at it uh, a little bit closer, I would probably put 30 to 40 there, uh, especially since we could get you know many coastal snows, storms, and uh, snowstorms. So uh, that's basically it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.